On Highway Through Hell. It's a little tight here. Action like never before. Pull it over. With three rotators. Four. Definitely the first time in my book. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Careful. It's a nightmare and a half. Tensions run high. Okay, hold on. On a notorious road. That'll hold it. Nope. Nope. And prized iron. It's a pretty serious plane. Up in smoke. That happened real quick. In British Columbia's Fraser Canyon, fall's first freeze has ended a record heat wave. It's an ever-changing world out there. I think everybody's happy that that page has turned for us. Near the town of Hope. I wonder what's going on there. Eat up, you guys. We gotta leave here in 10 minutes. At a local truck stop. It's the first wreck we've done this year together, too. Jamie Davis. It is. And his brother Jason are in for an unprecedented day. We're at the old time truck stop that's been around for years. It's kind of a family get together in a weird way. Nearby. He's jammed himself right into the rocks. A cliffside wreck. Is there any word on whether they can get this accident cleared up? Has traffic control setting up. It's a big load. Jamie. Jason. There we go. All the heavy records. And operator Chris Mervin. Roll three rotators. There are times when you need big machines. This is the first time in my career I've ever seen three rotators on one wreck, so it'll be interesting. This is where we're supposed to be. Saddle Rock. We're utilizing the best equipment to do this job properly. Well, there it is. That's quite laid over, eh? Yeah, it is. The challenge that we're facing here today is right up against the rock face. The semi lost control, crossed the highway, and crushed into the canyon wall. The unit has mushroom compost on it. Lots and lots of weight here. A wall. But on the inside, it goes like this, and all of a sudden, it falls out. On the back side. And there's probably at least 60,000 pounds just in the box alone. We're really worried about supporting the wall and bringing it up without any more damage. We'll see. On the Canyon Highway. Trailer looks brand new. A big rig. On the rocks. You're not really engineered to be pulled out of the ditch. Never mind being fully loaded. Has a trio of rotators on site. Rotators are not very common. Three of them in one place at one time is very rare. 
What do you want to do? We'll support it. We'll pull it a bit. You turn the truck. OK. We're dealing with a mountain face on one side of us, two lanes of highway, and then basically down to the Fraser River. Not much room to play with. I want to get dirty. I'm going through the very front. Ugh. Yeah, there we go. In? Yep. We want two heavy rotators on the load. Third rotator, we're going to use that on the front end. Where's Brianna? Today? I have to take the bumper off. The tow pin won't go in there. Here we go. Uh. The younger generation. Perfect. Is here to help. You can do this one. It's good for them to be out and about. Pull it out. I don't remember the last time all of us have gotten together to go on a job before. It is pretty cool to get everyone here. You want to get on top? Yeah, I was already thinking that. Jamie's 19-year-old son, James Jr. It's cool to work with my dad. It's better to learn with him. Pull it over. He's stepping up. Drag it over there now and put it on that. You know how thankful I am to be down here, standing here. <laughs> my dad, he's so patient with you, and he'll explain it where you get it. Put it down and let the clip come out. If they all get switched on here, I could have a heck of an army. OK, good. Nice. With aggressive two rotators cradling the box. And Jamie's on the front end. They'll try to coax the semi out. The first order of business here is to bring the trailer away from the rock wall. Go more on your gray a little bit. Being it's fully loaded, we definitely got to be a little careful here. What do you say? Get him to move the nose. Maybe. We definitely got to make sure that we don't just rip it all apart. These aluminum trailers, you got to try to spread the load out. We get too much pressure on one point, it buckles the ball. Easy, Marv, easy. Keep booming up. If it buckles the wall, then the trailer will be a right off. Don't go any more on that driver's side. The front? Yeah. It's a unique box worth more than 200 grand. I'm done. That trailer is expensive. Can't get it over? No. There's a lot of physics to this. You've got to run the math. What do we need here? What about a low line? Go ahead. A quick re-rig. Put it in there, young man. May tip the odds. We don't want to be greedy and pull it way up. But we just want to hang on to it. With a low line. Good. Hang on. The delicate tug of war is back on. There's a side of this that could be very dangerous. Forces are huge. Things can happen. Bad part right here. You can see I'm digging in the ground. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. That looks like it was nasty. In the Fraser Canyon. Ooh. Three rotators. We need that big iron. We need that big recovery capability. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
are on a rocky wreck. That's heavy pulling. And this whole thing has to be guided along like an orchestra. The team. What do you want to do? Go a little bit? Yeah. Needs to fine tune the plan for the pricey trailer. This is what they call the live floor. The floor shuffles. We're dealing with a loaded walking floor leaning into a mountain. It sure beat shoveling. A walking floor trailer offloads itself using hydraulic power. These trailers are worth a lot of money, more than $200,000. Moving the load out of the trailer, the floor goes back in section so the load stays in place, and now it continues walking again. It's very, very important to recover this thing without further damage. Oh my God, look at that. With Jamie's kids on hand. It's really cool being around the heavy machinery. It, it's crazy. Dad. Watch that line. Eyes and overhead threat. I got a cable, we're about three feet away. Just above us, we got some live power wires. See the power lines here? Power can jump from there to the wrecker. You definitely don't want to come in contact with those. Yeah, 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 whoa. Watch that line, Jace. Watch that line. One hundred twenty kilometers southwest. How is Highway Seven? Is that two tow trucks pass? Mission Towing's heavy iron is on the move. Let's see what we got here. Operator Andy Cullum and Ty Kennedy. So today we're headed over to the back of Mission. Lead the charge. It's twisty, turny quite the cliff on either side. Coming up from our Fraser Valley location, we're heading up Keystone Road. Very, very steep. It's a very tight road in general. Not looking good. That'd be a ride from hell. Arriving on scene. We were initially told that it would just need a little pull backwards. It's not what they expected. This is a RV down in the embankment. That's a big difference. Uh, let's hit a tree. Can you go tow it, please? Luckily, the driver bailed out before it went over the hill. So he's all right. That's a nightmare and a half. We can sling this rear wheel. Yeah. Pull one off there. Other truck, we can probably go off the other wheel and the front axle. OK, well, let's set up with that. Joining the 50-ton wrecker. Man, that must have been a hell of a ride. Is a 35-ton with a familiar face. Now with a different company. Just wanted to make a change and see how the rest of the world works. Oh. Yeah, it's not good. Burn on! For years, Brian Rash. Yes. Yeah. Worked for Jamie Davis. That's how you go logging in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Today, did you loosen off your cable tensioner so it's easier? OK, that's the news one to me. Is Brian's. It's right here. First big recovery on a new team. So we won't even be able to. No. With the new people, 
and different equipment. It's a little stressful, but uh, I'm working through it. The sidelined RV is worth half a million dollars. Ethan, just grab that and take it down. I want to make sure that we salvage it because it's quite the expensive unit. Perfect. Good. My concern is when we get it off that tree, is it going to try to go over? Yeah, they're, they are top heavy. We got everything ready. Now the fun part begins. OK. Ready? Yeah. The 44,000 pound unit. Give her a good pull. Yeah. Nice and easy. There you go, yeah. Needs to make it. Pull with his right line. Pull in. Up the punishing bank. You want to make sure we get it up in one piece and then good shit. Ryan, slow down on that front line. and a half northeast. Watch that line. Three rotators fight a wreck under live lines. The boom is close to a power source. We always worry about induction. I'd boom in and up, Jay. Power can jump, you know, fry everyone around you. Hours ago, the semi and its walking floor trailer lost the road. Re rig the back. Now, you think that'll lift straight up? Yeah, if I grab both back. We'll bring it up onto the roadway in front of my outrigger. Merv pivots to focus on tilting the rear. We're dealing with a fairly sharp degree of angle on the one side. They're piled up into the rock. Instead of pulling now, we're going to turn into a lift. Underneath a daunting cliff. Oh, I wouldn't go on that side, Jay. I'll get scary over there. Everyone must stay alert. This terrain that we're on here is very, very susceptible to rock slides. Very dangerous. It's got to be more than 40 years that we've been recovering vehicles in the canyon. So you've got to really worry about rocks or big chunks of ice. I'm amazed that a big rock hasn't come down and wiped me out already. Got her? Got it. With the re-rig dialed. Move it. The back end inches. He's leaning the hell of a lean. Away from the rocks. When you're lifting these things out and trying to put them back on the road, sometimes they shift. Jason. Move up a bit. Reels the rest of the trailer in. Good more. Oh. You potentially looking at having it roll back over in the ditch, or worst case scenario, roll my truck over. Come up on your passenger a bit. Yep. Nice. Team aggressive. have done their part. OK, Jam, it's all on you now, bud. Now Jamie needs to tackle the front end. 
and my rotator, it's gonna do it the quickest and most efficient way. We're right up against the lake. But keeping one lane open. Trucks are going right by you in a really tight little space. Comes with a cost. We're running out of real estate here. Whoa. Whoa. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. On the canyon highway. Just a little tight here. A cliff side rig. We're right up against the legs. Is too close for comfort. Hold it! Hold it! That's about it, mate. Whenever we're working with our rotators, we're always very cautious about them. We'll just suck your outriggers in. I'm watching Merv's truck. Merv's watching mine. Okay. Pick it up a little bit. Oh, boy. I'm out. Then it's out of the ditch. I remember Jason and I doing jobs together with two rotators, but this is the first time we've used three. For more than two decades, rotators have conquered the day. I want to get the boom up quite a bit on this one. For Jamie. And aggressive. Okay, pretty soon I'm going to have to boom out, Jamie. Hold on, hold on. When you look back at the jobs, the complexities of some of them that we've done. So yeah, that was a good job. Wow. But today, I really enjoy where everybody's involved. Kids, brother, Merv, all of them. <laughs> Three rotators on one scene. It's quite unique to be part of and it went quite well. The payoff is the walking floor trailer rolling away oh. with its cargo intact. Good job, Jay. <laughs> When you're working together, utilizing the best equipment, you're gonna have a successful job. All right. Okay, let's go. the southwest. Okay, keep pulling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reliable mission team. Brian, slow down on that front line. Whoa, whoa. Battles an unwieldy wreck. We don't see RVs every day. Okay, Paul. I don't trust that at all. This is one of the most unique recoveries I've ever been on. That's sketchy. Normally, on this road near the highway. Holy! Look at that truck. The casualties are big rigs. Okay, go ahead. Take a pull. Trucks usually end up at the bottom, rolled over. Perfect. But today, 
The fragile RV is something else. The second they start getting cracks or breaks in them, they can easily just all of a sudden tear apart. Okay, a little more. Yeah, hold on. Okay. Let's just take a sec. With the unit dangling on a rugged bank. If I could go a little bit more that way. Yeah. They need a way. We got this to go still. To make room for the 45 foot long RV. I just don't want to get to the point of no return. Let's get him to come to where he can hold it. Unlimited blacktop. The way that it is sitting over the embankment, the little room that we have on the road. Oh, that's going to be tight, Andy. I know. Very nervous. The 50 ton is in the landing zone. You move, and then we'll finish pulling it up. But if it lets loose to reposition, the 44,000 pound wreck may overwhelm the other truck. It's a bad angle. Andy. Bit of a hillbilly here. That'll hold it. No. Thinks he has a solution. Break to a tree so that we can move one record at a time and open up our workspace. But Ty. He's trying to say that maple tree will hold this. He's in Seoul. This tree could fall down and potentially kill somebody. No, no, no. Did they open that up yet? No, it's still so closed. In the Fraser Valley. Bit of a hillbilly here. Andy. No. That'll hold it. No. Wants to harness big timber on a tricky wreck. There is no book that will tell you how to do every recovery. But Ty. No. No. Thinks the forest may not hold its ground, anchoring a 44,000 pound RV. I grew up in the logging street. My grandfather was killed by a tree. I generally don't like to use anything but our wreckers and or a proper dead weight. But on the narrow road. What we're trying to do is a little bit of geometry here and see how we can best work the angles. It's the only way to keep the recovery moving. It's just one of those things. Sometimes you gotta really think outside the box. Hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not a bad idea. We'll try it out. We got this. You just gotta be careful how you pull in it. With Ty on board. Try that, Ethan. The crew starts to rig. Oh boy. <laughs> With a strap around the tree, they'll run a line from the 35 ton to hold the wreck so the 50 ton can reposition. Okay. Woo. We're hooked. Now hopefully it doesn't bring that tree down on us all. That'll be something. If it moves, we'll see it at the top first. Yeah, as I'm watching the little twigs. Yeah. I'm looking for any sway or any movement. The tree goes, you gotta run fast. I think that tree's gonna come. Oh. How is it? I've been trying to... I wonder what they're doing there. 20 kilometers south. Rescue one confirmed. And we're responding. First responders roll up. We'll get you to come out this way, okay? On an unusual scene. I can't really feel anything. Okay. Today we're doing a mock crash. 
at one of our local high schools. Unresponsive, just holding C's fine here. We'll start with the extrication. In those cars are a series of actors to play different roles, some of them being injured. Constable Paul Walker is monitoring the event. Do you want to jump out for me, sir? Also with the Abbotsford Police Department, Constable Scott McClure leads the force in taking impaired drivers. Right up here for me, Jazz. And here we go. Off the road. I've done a lot of these investigations. I've kind of become that trusted person on my shift. All I can do is keep my fingers crossed that the more I talk about it, the more people hear it, and maybe I'd potentially save somebody's life. I'm definitely gonna take this into consideration when I'm in social events and driving afterwards. You almost want everyone to see something like this to know how it really is, because like we saw today, lives can be lost. We hope this will guide them in making great choices when getting behind the wheel. If we can change one person's decision for the better, it was worth it. Watch that tree to the north. The tree goes, you gotta run fast. The reliable mission team. Tell me if it starts moving. Is gambling. Oh on the forest. The trees making some noises that I'm not super happy with. The makeshift anchor. I'm nervous. I'm loose. Is being used to hold a 44,000 pound RV. Okay, it's on hook. It's nerve wracking. The 50 ton wrecker repositions. I just want them to be quick. Okay, tighten yours up, Andy. Now Andy has enough room for the next round. Let's take Brian's line off. Trying to use the tree. Andy had a great idea. It came together really well. Yeah, yeah. Good old hillbilly. We're lucky we have a well-rooted tree. Quickly. Okay, we ready then? Yeah. The final test. We're almost there. Is finessing the low-riding RV over the crest of the road. I don't like that noise. There's so many challenges that are in heavy recovery. Let it out. It's fighting too much against itself. You add a 60-foot embankment to it, $500,000 RV, it's a lot of pressure. Rip in half. Boom down. Yeah. It's already like a cracked egg. You got to. Be careful with it. We don't got it yet. No. Hold on, hold on. Oh, 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 oh. We don't got it yet. No. In mission. A low riding wreck. Hold on, hold on. Oh, 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 oh. Is at the make or break point. That last step, going up a bank, that's a stressful part of the day. We're losing it. No, we won't. You're most likely to break a vehicle in half, have a vehicle roll over, lose everything. We're almost at that tipping point. Let me get it, then he can go. The 45 foot long RV. We have to do our absolute best to bring it up over the edge without causing any more damage. Slowly creeps. Here we go. 
It's touching down. Okay, start pulling it a bit. Over the crest of the road. There we go. That's how I wanted it. Beautiful. Nice job, buddy. Woo! Yeah, baby. We want to get it out of here as quick as possible because it is getting close to uh, quitting time for everybody. Like a slingshot. The half a million dollar RV. That's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. We're gonna need a beer after this one. <laughs> is finally saved. Like no damage extra. Seriously, that was mint. Wow. Look at that. Right on. <laughs> We've got it up on the road, and it went great. There's a lot that goes on with these recoveries. I'm just happy that we got it up on the road with no extra damage. It's open. I need to grease it and check the oil. Jamie is hustling. I didn't bring the hose in. To get ready for the next call. Well, the old rotator is on its knees right now. We've really been going crazy with it. It's finally at the point where I've got to stop and do maintenance. I'm scrambling every day to keep trucks on the road. We are so busy. Got more oil in order. I love to do the recovery work. And the long haul business for us has been good. Okay, I'll fire it up. Earlier today, Jamie's 30 ton Mac headed out for a highway haul. We've committed to people. If we tell you we're going to get your rig, we're going to get your rig. But then... Hello? How bad is it? I'm getting multiple calls from truckers. It's a pretty serious flame. The Mac's on fire. Oh my God. Oh my God. In hope, Jamie gets unthinkable news. Oh. The Mac is burning after loading a highway haul. The fire spread pretty rapid. The driver is okay. Brakes caught fire. Overheated, coming down a hill. Hours later. We have burned right down to a crisp. Oh, man. The half a million dollar wrecker is totally destroyed. In this area, there is no fire department. This just can't be happening. Four winters ago. James, that's it. Wow. Yeah. That one's nice. Yeah. The modern wrecker. It's perfect. Was Jamie's first new truck in years. That's good. Building the Mac was a turning point 
they signed it at the factory. Nice. In things getting better for us as a business. A little bit on the blue one down. Whoa. Yeah. That's what we wanted. And the Mac performed flawlessly. Let's get that winch line on it. Careful on this bumper. That state-of-the-art unit, beautiful paint, pretty tough to beat. Unbelievable. As day turns to night. It's actually here. Yeah. Jamie lays eyes. Wow. On what's left of his truck. That is just totally demolished. Burnt, burnt, burnt to a crisp. It's done. I spent a lot of miles in that truck. I just can't believe how destroyed it is. It's a very sinking feeling. There's nothing left of it. Losing the Mac is a terrible thing for us, for our business. This thing was like brand new. You know, I went down to Tennessee and James came with me. And, and look at it now. The guys who were on the line actually, with felt pen, they signed their name on the engine. That's a bit of an emotional thing to me. Because they were, they cared, right? They had so much pride signing the, the, the valve cover for me, you know? That hurts me. To see it go down in flames, was just a real heartbreaker for me, it really was. I don't know how we're gonna deal with that, I really don't. Too much. I'm nervous about the winter coming up because it affects the day to day. Where that's gonna take us, we just don't know. Next time, on Highway Through Hell. Ditched in deep. We're gonna earn our dinner tonight. Jamie digs in. Hey! Oh! Oh! A monumental job. 2.2 kilometers of sewer pipe. Brings in owls. All right, fellas. Big iron. I feel this thing shaking. Yeah. And. It's coming. It's all hands on deck. Keep pulling. For reliable towing. Whoa! In deep. We're gonna earn our dinner tonight. Jamie digs in. Hey, oh, oh. A monumental job. 2.2 kilometers of sewer pipe. Brings in owls. All right, fellas. Big iron. I feel this thing shaking. Yeah. And it's coming. It's all hands on deck. Be pulling. For reliable towing. Lots of snow. Early November. Yeah, it's crazy. Snow has come to the doorstep of the Rocky Mountains. We've got snowstorms hitting us hard and heavy. It's pretty bad. And accidents are going to happen. There's a wreck there. Nice parking job there. We're gonna earn our dinner tonight. Jamie Davis heads to a job in his 40-ton LA rotator. We're gonna 
We're heading out here, too, Wreck. It's a rotator-type job. One of the last heavies in his fleet. We've been kicked this year pretty hard. We are struggling to keep trucks on the road. But the rotator is just a good, solid workhorse truck. And it's got a lot of work ahead of it. But arriving to the scene. Wow. There's over 15 feet of snow. <sighs> this is not good. Between the rotator. Lots of snow, eh? And the wreck. Yeah, it's pretty deep. That's a lot of snow. This truck is totally snowed in. And the snow. Hope there's no damage. He's only the first. The wall's bowed out a bit. Of Jamie's problems. That trailer is soft-sided, and the load is resting on the wall. It won't be easy. Heavy, heavy load. This is going to be really tough. Man, oh, man. In southeastern BC. Wow. There's a lot of snow here right now. Jamie sizes up the 74,000 pound semi buried in snow. Man, oh man. Days ago, in whiteout conditions, the driver lost the road and the snow kept falling. This is going to be really tough. We have to do some snow clearing before we can actually even hook onto the unit. To help clear the snow, Rob's here with the skid steer. Jamie's skid steer gets to work. That's pretty fast. Couldn't even do this job without it. This machine is really a lifesaver for me. They want us out of here before the avalanche closure opens. Highway officials are watching the clock. The road's closed. 80 kilometers west, while avalanche control is underway. Avalanche control is for the public safety. There's a huge need for it. Eastbound traffic is on hold. Closed for avalanche control. Jamie must clear the wreck before traffic is released. This highway is going to be inundated with traffic. I don't have time to mess around with things. But help is on its way. Jamie's 25-ton iron. All right, here we go. Driven by long-haul driver turned heavy recovery operator, Mitch Mahood. It's my first time in a heavy wreck. So I'm kind of excited about that. OK, we're good. Mitch has done a heck of a job on the long hauling. I really need him to step up. With most of the snow cleared away. I'm gonna get some straps out. Okay. Rigging begins. Multiple straps to spread the forces that you're putting against the side of the trailer. With lines from the rotator to straps, and the 25 ton on the front. They'll first pull the unit off the rock wall and then back onto the road. They use this to throw over the trailer. But rigging. How good my throw is. A snow covered trailer is easier said than done. This will be a challenge just getting straps over top of it. Okay. Yeah. Give her. I'm trying to do my best to position these straps. Pull it now. Ugh. Ugh. Can't do it, man. It's jammed. 
every step of the way, the snow is putting up a fight. They're still working. Over 600 kilometers southwest. By the time you get home, there should be snow in the valley. In the Fraser Valley. Okay. Al Quiring gets ready for action. We got work to do. But today's job. Let's see if I can start that big tractor. Needs Al's big iron. I use winches every day and. The D9 has got the biggest one of them all. We're definitely going to be laying down some horsepower and pulling some metal. Beauty. With the D9 ready for transport. All right, let's roll. Now. OK, here we go. Leads the charge away from the mountains toward the coast. Going to help the uh, Greater Vancouver Regional District with a industrial job. Today I'm just providing a directional winching service of a very large capacity. A fairly big project, uh, an important one for the greater Metro Vancouver area. And with me, the bigger the job, the happier I am. <laughs> Half an hour west, over the Fraser River. It'll be interesting to see what's going on out there. Now you're going to come in here. on the right. Ow. Holy. Gets his first look. Lots of equipment moving around today. At the $2.3 billion wastewater infrastructure project. They've got about 2.2 kilometers of sewer pipe we're going to be pulling. Holy cow. It's a big job. It's not like pulling a car out of the ditch. It's a little bit more technical than that. It's a pretty heavy iron, and we're going to be moving it, so. Go big or go home, right? Are we going to go? Get it close. North of the Fraser River. Lots of equipment moving around today, holy cow. Al sizes up his adversary. Big old snake. A two kilometer steel pipe. Big job. There's a lot of people at hand here, not just me, but the welders that did the pipe, the truckers that brought the pipe. There's a lot of wheels in motion. Earlier, Metro Vancouver engineers augured a tunnel like this one, 40 meters below the Fraser River. These engineers, people don't realize what they do, but it's pretty amazing. The tunnel runs 1,650 meters under the river to a treatment plant upgraded to handle more than nine times its current capacity. Just watch all the moving equipment. Coordinating the pull. So nobody on this side. Is General Superintendent Russ Polso. We're pulling the pipe through a hole that we've augered underneath the river that will connect to the other side of the river. It's a big day for him, and it's kind of a big day for us too. Al! There's going to be a lot of people counting on a big dozer. Where do you want to set your winch up? Al. The cable through a block, and then we bring the cat in here. 
will use his D9 dozer to winch the three million pound pipe 40 meters. This is the kind of the finish line? Yeah, it is. To the tunnel opening, where it'll attach to the pull head and continue under the river. Let's do it. All right, fellas. Al positions his 55 ton dozer. Hers like a kitten. For his key role in the $2.3 billion project. We're currently going through about $150,000 every 12 hours. I want to get it going ASAP. A lot of money being spent. Big bucks. They got six, eight cranes here, all ching, ching, ching like the national debt machines. So yeah, there's a lot of pressure on me. Get in position. When it's our turn, we don't want to fail. What's going on? There's a wreck. Seven hours east. Heavy snow. Oh, can't do her, man. Is keeping Jamie's attempts at rigging out of reach. It's getting hung up in the snow here. To get the straps over the trailer. Unless you can come in here with the bobcat and I can kind of lift it. Try that. Jamie takes advantage of the tools on site. I love the job of trying to figure out how are we going to get through this. OK. By hitching a ride to the top. Whoa, whoa. Good there. Good. Good. Jamie can see what he's working with. Okay. And with a precise throw. Keep going. Mitch pulls the strap into position. I got the strap. Okay, perfect. Okay, buddy. That's what I love to do, so it's this is a fun day for me. Now just throw it over one more time. And... <laughs> With another 12-foot boost. Okay, I'm on the other side. Jamie gets the final strap. Got it. Okay, pull it. Secured around the fully loaded trailer. That made my life a lot easier. <laughs> really did. Nothing like a little snow shower to get the day going, eh? Your hook should just be right on that front end. But digging out the front. What's it got on it? If I hook on the bumper and pull this, it's going to tear it right off. Reveals another problem. These aluminum bumpers, a lot of guys call them rabbit bumpers. They're made for a front impact, right? They're really not designed to take a forward pull. Problem is, the bumper's so bad. Sometimes we've unhooked these bumpers. It's really not a good place to hook to but we only have a short window of time. Highways crews are eager to have the wreck cleared before eastbound traffic is released. They'd really like us to be gone when the traffic comes through. I don't have time to mess around with things. Wrap your two straps around it. OK. So Jamie pushes ahead. We're going to try to. Traffic is going to be barreling through here, so we don't have time. Now the fun part. OK, the moment of truth. OK, go ahead. Oh. But the pole. Oh, the bumper's falling off. is too much for the bumper. The pin came out the back. Yeah, that side's still connected. But now, how can we change things so we're not pulling so hard? Can you steer it? With the tractor still able to run. Put it in drive and just give it a little bit. Jamie puts his swamper behind the wheel. I'm gonna try to get this back by the landing gear. Then, he re-rigs to the next best thing. I don't really like pulling on this area here. Not the best, but the clock's ticking. 
Just be careful you don't pull too, too hard on that. Mitch is feeling the pressure. A little uneasy about how it's going to go. I don't know if it's going to slide or tweak or bend when I start pulling on it. He must master the 25 tons controls. Be careful. On his first heavy job for Jamie. Do a little bit on your front end. Now a little bit on this one. On a mountain pass. Now a little bit on this one. Mitch. Hey. Takes it one tug. Oh, oh. Too far. Undo this one. Okay. We're gonna end up tearing that off. No matter what we do here, it's just not working out. We got nowhere to hook onto. Yeah, you can release your traffic. But an hour away. We're rolling now. Heavy traffic starts heading east towards Jamie. <laughs> the avalanche control window is up, but we gotta be off this road before that wave comes to us. Let's rethink things here a bit. Running out of quick solutions. We can get that out of there and put two regular tow pins in it, maybe. Jamie pivots. We're gonna have to pull this bumper off. Okay. It's a little bit of an inconvenience. There we go. But it's the best way to do it. So now we can use the good old fashioned tow pins that belong on the truck. There we go. And use that to pull on. Okay. Mitch's lines are rehooked to the front. There it comes. And the 74,000 pound unit. Now we're talking. Finally. Let's unhook this other one. Starts inching towards pavement. That's coming nicely now. Slowly getting this guy out of the ditch. Days ago, the fully loaded semi went off the highway coming to a rest against a rock wall. Now, All right. the tractor is back on the road. Yeah, that went really well. The team can unhook. And for Mitch. We're happy, customer's happy, insurance is happy. Win, win, win. Today was a welcome success. It's a great feeling to have a successful job done with the boss man. Definitely one to knock off the bucket list. I'm kind of happy about that. That one's done. It's a tough, tough job. Okay, we're good. Can Mitch weather the storm? We'll see. Okay, go. There's no damage in this whole unit, and it's possible for the customer to drive it and deliver the load. Right on, thank you. Traffic's gonna be here any moment. Good to go. Being able to pull this thing out loaded is a real savings for the customer. And we just got by. They got it all cleaned up. Get ready. To the west. Good copy. Al prepares for his key role. A lot of them on your bits, bud in a $2 billion project. Big bucks. With the dozer's winch line running from the pipe to the tunnel, the pipe will be winched over ground rollers like a conveyor belt, inching the pipe 40 meters to the finish line. I'm the only fellow that's got anything that can tow this in Canada. 
to amplify his dozer's pulling power. We'll hang it while we hook rigging up. Al's brought a secret weapon. Yeah, we're gonna spin that baby around. They're a 200,000 pound rated snatch block. Nothing but smashed fingernails around here. They wanted a certified load of 100 tons. The winch that's on the D9. Keep her going. The cable, all the rigging, all meet that criteria. A little more. To ease the pull, the two kilometer pipe will move over frictionless rollers guided by crane hung cradles. It's going to help reduce the resistance. We'll keep everybody on the outside. No people in this zone at all. After a final safety meeting, if anybody sees anything out of the ordinary, let's just take a moment. Let's take the time to get it right. They're all engineers, and they have to make sure that everything goes tic-tac-toe. So we're ready? We are ready. There's a lot of stress. Here we go. The risky part is that we cannot have that hole left open. If these cables or his tractor fail, every minute that we wait, the risk of the hole collapsing gets higher and higher and higher. Good. Massive time pressure. Al fires up the D9's 160,000-pound winch. Here we go. Here we go. You have to be ready to go. When they say, OK, drill's out of the way, hurry up, because the hole's going to cave in, and we need to get that pipe in the hole. We're just tensioning up here, so get ready. Have you done. It takes a lot of force to get it moving. The two kilometer pipe starts its 40 meter journey. You're not pulling a thousand pounds or 10,000 pounds or even a hundred thousand pounds. You're pulling a lot more now. As the three million pound pole inches along. Kind of got the jitters because there's a lot of people that are looking at you. Everything's riding on Al and his D9. I don't want to be the guy that's holding them up because holy moly. <laughs> Feel this thing shaking. Yeah. Up. What do we got going on down there? Feel this thing shaking. At a two billion dollar infrastructure project. All stop. Al's high stakes pull. What do we got going on down there? Is suddenly. Yeah, we're at all stop. On pause. All the way down for the length of that pipe, they've got spotters with radios. We have the ability to stop before a disaster happens. One roller has come on them. One set of the ground rollers. Just got to tidy up two rollers. Needs readjustments. Is it so heavy that it twisted the axles on the rollers? These guys are ahead of the game by a long shot so that we don't have problems. OK, everybody, here we go. With the rollers realigned. All right, I'll fire that thing up. Al resumes the pull. Critical that you have that communication and coordination throughout the whole operation, definitely. I'm in good. So far, so good. Only got six more feet. After 45 minutes. Pull's all done. Thank you. Al's job is complete. I'm really relieved. That big old girl pulls pretty good. Al's dozer worked just beautifully, just the way it was planned. Tow truck will pull a lot, but this will pull a lot more. <laughs> Guaranteed. 
and I came in, did the little pull. Glad my part's done. My old tractor is like taking home the old tractor award one more time. It's the big tractor that could, it still does. But for the team, we're on target now. Today's work isn't over yet. We'll hook it onto the drill rig and we'll be pulling this under the river. With a pipe raised 100 feet to enter at the precise angle, the crew connects the two kilometer pipe to the drill rig. The team takes a moment to celebrate. <laughs> Good work. They'll be flush and happy, are ya? Now the pipe begins its 48-hour journey through the tunnel. The final goal is to get that pipe made it up with the other sections that they're gonna start building. It's a crucial step in a legacy project that will serve the community for years to come. It was cool, thanks to the contractors and the GVRD. All right, let's go. For letting the world see that tow truck guys don't just pull cars out of ditches. That was pretty awesome. I'm pretty thankful to all of them. Maybe in 50, 100 years or whatever, when somebody hits the old trigger on the toilet, they'll think of me. <laughs> right on, thanks, guys. Nice work. Good morning. Early the next morning, Anybody tell me what Highway 1's like? An hour east. RL busy. Overnight freight runs. Heavy traffic this time of the day. Roll on the Trans-Canada Highway. Highway 1 through the Fraser Valley is vital to us because it's the one real highway that we have that allows good flow of traffic. But just as commuters... It watches all the popcorn. Join the morning rush. Oh my goodness. Heading to the scene. Let's see what we got here. Reliable towing operator, Andy Cullum. They were headed to recover a trailer in the ditch. In the Mission 50 ton. We want to get this out before it causes another accident. Following in a second heavy. Let's get to work. Is Ty Kennedy. Anytime you have to do a job on the Trans-Canada Highway. It's a lot of pressure. Arriving on scene. There is a truck in the ditch. Doesn't look good. It's heavy. What's this full of? It's uh, fully loaded with compost. Wet dirt's pretty much the heaviest thing you can deal with here. You can unload it. Yeah. It's take forever. Yeah. Or try to pull on it first. My concern is it's just going to want to buckle. I don't want to tear the trailer open and have all that material on the ground. Oh. I want to make sure we get it out with no damage. With authorities anxious to clear the distraction to drivers. OK, well, let's try it. They opt for the fastest solution. OK, let's talk to RCMP about it. We want to get it out of the ditch the quickest. But to upright the fully loaded trailer. OK, we're good, Andy. It's shut down. They need to close the highway. Just pull it ahead. What's going on? They're doing recovery. It's critical the job gets done quickly to allow the flow of traffic. Lines from the heavies are hooked okay. to the trailer's frame. Give it a pull. Let's just see what happens. Oh. What's the amount of load? Oh. 
you gotta be careful with the amount of stress on your cables. The wreck is back on its wheels. Unhook that chain. Now they need to coax it up the bank. Bro, stop. But with traffic backing up. We're gonna let the traffic go. They're forced to press pause. We're gonna allow our traffic to come through for a while and then do the recovery. Okay guys, here we go. As dawn breaks, Still doing that recovery. traffic is building. This is the morning rush. It's going to get worse before it gets better. We have to get this done. But to finish the job. Well, let's get her to shut it down and we'll get ready to go. They must close the highway oh, no. again. There's a lot of pressure on us to get this highway open. Go oh, I grab that line. We've got to make sure our rigging's right. Everybody's ready to go. Everybody's switched on. We want to get this out of here. With four lines on the wreck. Okay, paddle one. Swamper Ethan Boyd will try to steer it out. Turn hard left. If it starts to roll, hold yourself down in that seat. We got no room for air now. You ready? Ready when you are. With 40 tons on the lines. Yeah, it's coming. They're at the point of no return. If something goes wrong or a line breaks, it falls back, we're screwed. Keep pulling. Head oh. stop now. On Highway 1, the, truck out of the, ditch. the reliable team. We gotta go that way a little bit as he comes. Is wrangling an 80,000 pound wreck. Keep pulling. Out of the ditch. Can't stop now. And back to the road. Yeah. We've gotta keep it moving. Get it as far as we can. You're good here. Now it's up to the swamper. Hey, just get Ethan to drive it out. To finish the job. Watch the trailer on my truck. Okay. Hopefully everything goes well, so <laughs> I don't hear about it. And after a 15-minute closure... You could probably go right up to that. Pull out. Okay. The barely damaged semi is rolling down the road. He's out. Success. Always success. <laughs> and Highway 1 is reopened for the morning rush. He's open. We're rolling. Very proud of the team. They got it out of there really quick. Thanks for the good work, folks. One hundred sixty kilometers northeast, just outside Merritt, BC. Impressive. Reliable's military rotator. Here we go. And Dylan Greenwood head to a backcountry job. The six by six is perfect. Got six wheel drive and fifty four inch military tires. It's awesome. For decades. The M936 Rotator 
recovered military equipment in punishing conditions. We purchased this truck to get into hard terrain that could pretty much accomplish anything. But seeing the road ahead, Dylan stops to chain up. This particular road is very steep. It's very icy. Joining him today. So you haven't even seen the truck? No. Is rookie operator Jesse Maunu. I love working at Reliable. A lot of it can be challenging. Don't tangle them up. Oh, yeah. He's going to be learning and picking up as he goes. Go to work. Leaving the one ton behind, Dylan and Jesse head up the icy road. How's that chain in the back looking? Good so far. It's very important to make sure the chains don't break. Ten minutes up the hill. That's probably it. The pair reach their target. Looks like it rolled down the hill. Ah, it's pretty rough. Yeah. Yeah, he said he hit a tree when he rolled down. The pickup truck. Been sitting out here for a while now. Is stranded. The road's just up there. He rolled down the bank, landed back on its wheels. We're just going to hook up to it, and we're going to drag this thing down the hill. So if you want to jump in there, Jesse. Yep. Jesse's going to steer it, and I'll pull it. But hauling the wreck out of the bush. Yeah, I just turned the key on. Battery's dead. You got any brakes? I hope so. Hopefully. You're going to find out. Will require nerves of steel. This is my first time ever doing anything like this. All right, we're rolling. The six by six starts hauling the 5,000 pound truck. We're gonna come around the corner again. Through deep snow, just to get on the road. So far, everything's looking good. But now, here we go. It's an icy bobsled run. Up now. Two kilometers down a steep grade. The road is a sheet of ice, and there's corners with steep drop-offs. A lot of adrenaline. It's nerve-wracking, trying to keep it slow. Careful now. He could come around the corner and with enough momentum, could crash off the road. I'm nervous about this one. down an icy back road. The military rotator has a pickup on the hook with no brakes. The pickup truck doesn't run, so the braking system and the steering system don't work properly. So it's a strong arm steering. Hopefully it doesn't rear end me going down the hill. Here's a home stretch. But after two kilometers, the road starts to flatten out. Pretty relieved. It was a lot of fun, though, I can tell you that. You're laughing now. I'm an adrenaline junkie. <laughs> Guess he's a big boy. He can figure it out. <laughs> Back at the pullout. Arms are sore now. Pick it up from the rear. Jesse's one ton. Good. Takes over the tow. You the man. I love the different jobs in towing. That's my favorite part about it. Still in there? Yeah. To pull it through the snow and ice, it simplifies a lot of things when you've got 
A six by six record. Beautiful. We're done. There's no truck better. Having the military truck makes me feel good. I know they have the tools, and with their skill, they can get the job done. Drive safe, guys. Can't get you, bud. Yeah, I'm the other side. Beautiful, Dave. Two and a half hours southwest. I'm just taking in the sights. What can I say? At the choiring yard. Al enjoys some productive downtime. Change your tires. Not every day is a tow truck day. Some days we do a little bit of maintenance. I remember these tires weighing so much. Come on, baby. Every job we do is different. And every call we do is different. So one day you're driving a tow truck, and one day you're working on the D9, carrying on some other adventure. Yeah, I'm not as fast as a real tire guy, but it's enjoyable. <laughs> That's what it's about. I'm looking cool. <laughs> and we're good. Next time on Highway Through Hell. One year after disaster. That's gonna take a while. The Coquihalla, it's something we took for granted. Two crews in the canyon. Did you boom down a bit? Whoa. Fight a nose down payload. Hold on. Whoa, whoa. Jamie's rotator. This is wrong. Has a wreck on the edge. Just be careful. And a dozer showdown. All right, here we go. For Team Green. Watch out. Disaster. That's gonna take a while. The Coquihalla, it's something we took for granted. Two crews in the canyon. Did you boom down a bit? Whoa. Fight a nose down payload. Hold on. Oh, whoa. Jamie's rotator. This is wrong. Has a wreck on the edge. Just be careful. And a dozer showdown. All right, here we go. For Team Green. Watch out. Out the canyon. Eh? Mid-November. The flashing stop is slippery. In British Columbia's Fraser Canyon. There's something going on. Semi in the ditch. He's hanging all over the place. Dispatched from the west. Let's make a plan now. Is MSA Towing's Karpal Bunwait. The weather's not on our side. And his son Gersimrin, or Sim. The customer is not happy, so we have to get it out ASAP. Joining MSA tonight is a second heavy wrecker. Should be a pretty good team. With Andy Cullum. And following behind. We are headed up to Spence's Bridge. Reliable towings, Ty Kennedy. I've never actually worked a wreck on this highway before. Early winter conditions. Nothing like it was last year. One year ago. Yeah, this is really all sound good. One of the biggest disasters ever seen in British Columbia. Thundermine on both sides, asphalt falling down. Closed the canyon for months. Pretty crazy. What a unreal 
weather event. It was just unbelievable. Oh boy, that's a mess. Tonight, in there deep. the team's first look at the wreck Ooh. is an unwelcome sight. Holy! Seeing this truck in pictures is completely different than it is looking at it now. It's way deeper than it was showing. A snow plow driver witnessed the crash. He said it was. He was going this way? Yeah. Oh my. The driver lost control, jackknifed, and toppled deep into the ditch. We thought it was just off the road. I thought it was jackknife, not in the hole. This is not going to be a fun night. That was going to be hard. Highway 1. Track the trailer in the ditch. The MSA Reliable Tag Team. So, the one truck right here in the back, and one truck right there. Face a buried rig. Andy and Ty, this is the first time I'm going to work with them. So, what we'll do, we'll bring the, the, the rear axles right here. When the axles are up on the top, so we'll lift the front end up and swing it this way. It'll be a learning experience to see how everybody works together tonight. They're doing recovery. The 60,000 pound semi is loaded with urgent cargo. We have to do this quicker because this truck has a meal in it. It's already late because the weather. This one first, then this one. And that's it. You want a shackle? Sure. Perfect. Looks good to me. With lines from MSA's heavy to the trailer, and lines from Reliable's heavy to the tractor, they'll coax the mail truck out. Okay, let's go. We're gonna go ahead and pull and see what this thing does. Right away, anchoring is a challenge. So you know what? We lad up on snatch block. One of the idea is it. Sim. So the otte for otte for otte. Thinks a re rig will help. Hey, it don't hold on. Trust me. It's gonna take two seconds. Let's just switch it. But Kerpal. Let me extend the boom a little bit. I'm going to boom up so I have more pressure on my odd riggers, so that'll stop sliding. As a different plan. No, 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 no. It's not budging. Hours south. It's wide open. 
a 40-ton L.A. rotator. There's a tractor trailer that's been laying on its side. And Jamie Davis. Got to get food and easy. Head east on the coke. It's a lot safer to handle this kind of stuff at nighttime when there's not much traffic. A highway hit hard last year. Since the disaster, it's a whole different world. Last fall. The water's just off the floor and across the highway. Record-breaking rain. Destroyed 20 sites on the coke. That's the Coquihalla. The disaster that happened was really biblical in nature. Look at this. The whole highway's gone here. Oh my god. The flooding and the washout. What a disaster. The importance of the Coquihalla is hitting me a lot more than ever before. It's something we took for granted. Ah, oh, the Coke's beautiful, my friend. We're completely shut down here. They're doing a recovery. 150 kilometers north. No, 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 no. A two-team effort. Not budging. Isn't getting traction. We're gonna have to rethink what we're gonna do here. With a mail truck on the line. What did you think? Kerpal. I think they go high line because you're pulling too much back, right? Yeah. That's what if I was you thinking. go back to your up to you your top, you'll dig in harder. Checks in with a reliable crew. Let's go to the top. Yeah. What we want to do is put the high lines on the back of the trailer. Okay, let's put those hooks on. So we actually get the weight of the wreck, putting that force down on the back of the wrecker. Okay, that's fine now. It's a teamwork. We don't argue. Whatever the decision we make, and we are agree to it. It's coming. But there's a new problem. Come on. The biggest thing that's concerning me right now was the angle of the trailer. Now that we switched them from low lines to high lines, and it's starting to tip. Hold on, here we're gonna lose this trailer. We don't want this mail to be scattered all over the highway. Jack knife trailer. In the Fraser Canyon. Come on. MSA and Reliable are wrestling. Hold on here, we're gonna lose this trailer. With a tippy mail truck. Whoa. The highway's icy which is why the truck and trailer went off the road. This curb... Couldn't have picked a worse spot. ...is notorious. This is Killer's Corner. It's taken many, many lives over the years. There's a straight drop-off. A lot of trucks that end up over the edge. It'll be open soon. Tonight, the driver was lucky. Mr. Paul, you need to boom down a bit. You've got too much of this pull. We need to let the trailer down a bit. I will do that. Kerpal adapts. We are almost up on the road. To stabilize the tilting trailer. Now it's touching the ground. There we go. You want to move? Yeah, want to move now. It's really good to work with the other company. We can unhook from the back anyways. And we'll grab the front. Yeah. You hook up to Andy's stuff? Yeah. We'll grab the front. You can learn a lot from their experience. OK, sure. But the tractor is still far down the bank. Uh, one wrecker will, will pull the drives of the tractor, and the other will go on the front end. And hopefully, we can muscle it out. Each wreck is different. 
you always have to try new things. It's kind of a lousy corner, right? To the east. Wow. What happened there? Jamie. It's really tough. And the rotator have reached their destination. The truck and trailer's been in the ditch for a day or so. I don't know here. Let's go have a look at this. Wow, he just went straight in. Dry van, they don't have much structure to them. He drove off to the side thinking he was driving into the scale and didn't work out. Jamie has been informed. This is tough. That the transport has a partial load of mixed goods. If we put too much force against it, we're either going to crush the trailer or the load's going to fall through it. For the delicate rollover. So what we do on these is we go around here. Yeah, go all the way up and around. And then back. Yeah. Jamie needs the rigging. I'll have to get up top. To be strategically placed. OK. OK. The doors and its surround frame are very strong. OK, that's good there. That's the first place I go to every time. Joining Jamie in a heavy wrecker. There's Mitch coming. Long haul driver turned operator. Don't see any structural damage or anything. Mitch Mahood. When you work for Jamie, you gotta prove yourself. And now I got my opportunity. So we'll go down low. I want to have Mitch grab the tractor's front end. We need one more snatch block. What we're trying to do is what we call a power buckle. With a line from the rotator to the back of the trailer, the 25-ton heavy will pull two points, initiating the roll. Mitch's truck, it'll actually act as a lever on the front of the trailer. There OK, yeah, and then there, right there. Perfect. We can put a lot of power into flipping without actually going around the trailer. Yeah, right there. Perfect. I got like that pre-stage jitters sort of thing. So now suck your lines up and do as much as you can do. If you slide back a little bit, just stop. I'm just a little uneasy about how it's going to go. Mitch has kind of moved into a different world. OK, you're done, right? He hasn't done a lot of recovery work yet. Yeah. He said it's only got 15,000 pounds. So we shouldn't be OK. If it's light, like the customer says, we could pull us off. You got to be careful with this. This thing could go very bad in a hurry. They're recovering a drop in the median there. On a mountain highway. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A tricky rollover. Stop. What's it doing? Isn't going to plan. It's pulling too much in the wall. Jamie needs to retool. You really can't afford to make any mistakes here. So like this, there's a box, right? If I put the strap here, it'll go there. It'll make a nice triangle. So it's a little bit of roadside physics. The side walls are paper thin. The roof is paper thin. OK, and then this, what I'm lifting up should be right about there. OK. With the strap repositioned around the back corner, 
The LA rotator will lift the trailer until a second strap can be added to the front. You're gonna lift it up a little bit. Okay. With the strap. If you do it on an angle, it's more like a big hand. Good. Oh, yeah. You're grabbing more surface area, more structure. We're getting more gap. See if we can get that one underneath. Yeah. Now another strap is added. You see that? To distribute force over a larger area. Got it. It's all about having multiple pressure points against the side of the trailer that you're lifting and pulling on. Got it? Here we go. Ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Coming up now. Be careful. There's a balancing act there. Pull as hard as you can, but don't pull too hard. Here she comes. The trailer and its mixed load are landed. Just keep going. Now, it's all up to Mitch. Oh yeah, pressure's on. I'm just trying to dance that front end up. Jamie. A little bit more. Is keeping a close eye on the tight space. Hold it! We don't want to block the road. We want to keep traffic moving. Left lane closed. 10 to 20 feet ahead. Okay. The legs are getting closer and closer. Oh. Hang on a minute. Just be careful. Pull ahead. Okay. We have to adjust, make adjustments. I gotta move my boom with them. So that trailer can get by. Here we go. Come on, come on. Go ahead. There we go. Whoa. That was a beautiful job. I like that. I think most guys in our business really enjoy recovery work. It's trying to solve a problem, trying to figure things out. That was nice. Nice when they go good once in a while. <laughs> We're going to get this tractor trailer split up. We'll back up, get hooked up. They get that rack all cleaned up. Now attached to a fresh tractor. Yeah, that's what I heard. The trailer and its load can carry on. Having the outcome happen successfully, that makes me feel pretty good. We're good to go. Good to go home now. All right there. Hey, guys. Oh, still in there, right? Eh? In the Fraser Canyon. They're lighting trucks through. For now. On Killer's Corner. One more. Two teams. OK, let's do this. Mobilize for their next play. There's no damage to the trailer. All the mail is still inside. Hours ago, the mail truck took a nosedive. It's time to start pulling the front of the truck up. We can throw the chain through this hole, come down here. 
and pull this way. Okay, and then another one through the rim? Yeah, sure. Gunner recovery. Coming to a stop here, brother. Yeah, now go straight back. Hopefully we can get out of here soon. That's good. It's definitely a team effort on this one. Okay, Sam. Okay, Annie, go. A 20,000 pound tractor. Is cooperating. So far. We'll just work together and slowly pull this thing out. But Kerpal. Just uh, hold on. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Spots are risk. The fuel tanks are touching the ground. Oh yeah. If we kept pulling, the fuel going to be everywhere on the ground. Uh, She's right against the top of the road. Top out there. Any updates? The final stage. Watch activity going on there. Just a hold on. Of an urgent recovery. This is a high priority load. The trailer's full of mail. Hold on. The fuel tanks are touching the ground has hundreds of liters of diesel at stake. Oh, yeah. The fuel tanks, they could rupture open, and but we don't want to do that. So we have to lift it up. We're going to try and get some lift off the back end of the truck. Leveling up. Good to go. Yeah. Makes quick work. Now it's clear. That's it. Yeah. Of the hazard. Nice work. There we go. You tell us when, Kerpal. Then stop. You can go more a little bit. MSA and reliable. Talk about togetherness. That's it. Can finally. Okay, let's front row it then. Call it a night. It was good to get this done with a new team and help them be successful. Got? Yeah. It's like a brotherhood. Go, 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 go. Everyone looks out for each other. There we go. Yeah. That's it. This couldn't have gone better. Done deal. It's really fun working with Sim, with Kerpal. Well, okay, guys. Good working with you. Yeah. Thank you, eh? That's it. We did it. Razor Canyon's good. They did a good job, I'll tell you. What's it like up through Merritt? Pretty good. To the southeast. Operator Rooster Merkley. There's a lot of stuff going on. Has last fall on his mind. Last year to the day, we had the big catastrophic flood. This river rose about 10 to 12 feet. The whole town was drowned in high water. When devastation struck. This is insane. Reliable's military rotator was called on. Big step, partner for rescue efforts. Then facing a hundred million dollars in damage. Yeah, it's, it's a sad state of events. The team helped the community recover. You're good there, buddy. It felt good helping people out. We just stayed and fought. Like, we didn't run away. On the other side of town. Uh, I checked the progress today and see how things are coming along. 
Highway Supervisor Tom Agar and Maintenance Supervisor Curtis Brown lift off to survey the Coquihalla. I took five weeks off last summer and uh, didn't do anything. Looking at it now, you can't tell that it was washed out last year. Just sat there thinking about what I went through. Let's go, let's go. Getting turned around. After the highway was evacuated. You can't sit here. Okay. Thank you, sir. Holy crap. Highway crews. Bottom top bridge is gone. Held their ground. It's hard to say if it's helping yet. To save what they could. Need to get some more rock here quick. Do what I can to help get things cleaned up. Then Curtis pushed through. As machines raced winter. That's the first truck up to Coke. To reopen the mountain pass. Life is going to get back to normal here a little bit. In just 37 days. Drivers, they couldn't ask for a more beautiful day to open the coke. That area with the orange tarps, that's a brand new structure. Watching the progress in one year of rebuilding the highway and bridges. A lot of people involved. Yeah. It's very impressive what's been accomplished out there. But there's still a lot of work to do. Yeah, that's going to take a while. They've fully reinstated that. During the Coquihalla, one year after the floods. Everything is armored really well now. Yeah. A view from the sky shows an epic rebuild still underway. The repairs are fantastic. The new bridges that are being built are technical and require a lot more time. Looks so different than it did a year ago. It'll be about another year or so before all the permanent repairs are complete. Yeah, they have a long way. Southwest. Definitely changed the landscape. Did it ever? Reliable towing owner Suki Manj. It's been a year, and the biggest thing for me is how devastating it actually was. And so this was all water. This was all water. Is with Ty at another site. Imagine being trapped in the pitch black dark with the water coming up to your doors. Like, I can't even fathom that feeling. That was forever changed last fall. It'd be a scary, scary feeling, for sure. After mudslides buried Highway 7. A bunch of evacuations going on. Reliable played a key role. Can we get a deck for that red one, then? Clearing. There it goes. It's bringing it up. This is unbelievable. The only viable route to the coast. Then with help. Yeah, man. From aggressive towing, tackled bent metal. Merv knows what he's doing. Swept off the road. I feel our team fulfilled our mandate. We want to be counted on and compassionate at the same time. Pretty proud of you and the team, eh? So good job. I know I don't say it enough to you. Yeah. They went out and did what needed to happen.
What's going on in the number one here? 35 minutes southeast. Is there an accident up ahead? In Abbotsford. Drop in the median there. Try not to go by him at 120. The crash. Yeah, happened earlier today. We have a dump truck and pup trailer in the center median. The truck was loaded this morning with hot asphalt. It's going to be a little bit difficult for the tow company. We can't impede traffic during the rush hour. They want us to leave the vehicle until 9 o'clock that night. Hell firing, 627. Weighs 60,000 kgs. Heavy as heck, yeah. <laughs> All darn heavy. Al Quiry has been called to take on 130,000 pounds of semi mired in mud. That's not your basic Honda Civic. The dump truck and a transfer trailer. Two minutes out is Al's son, Carrie. Is there enough room up there for me? Nothing's better than being fed to the wolves, and you learn on the fly. Yep. I'm working with my dad on these big jobs, it's always a learning curve. Tonight, good to go. Father and son, all right. Here we go. Are on dozer duty. I've got my favorite old D9 out to the accident. It's got 30-inch track pads, big grocers on it. It's a terrific recovery machine. Last November, Al's D9 was repairing washed out rail. Go and run cat for like five days straight with no sleep. And then after that, the rail was running. Don't stop, keep it going. Carrie. There's no way to get to the name of the Battled to keep the only pass through the mountains open while dad was away. discovers that he's dealing with dead weight. The motor's knocked right out of the frame. There's not a chance that this engine will run. So what's the plan? Get the brakes cage. We can't charge the air system up. We're going to have to back the brakes off. <laughs> Another day working in the ditch, in a cold, wet ditch. Well, I got that one. Another day in paradise. So what we're doing is we're putting these caging bolts on. It releases the brake. <sighs> and that's it. You got it? Yeah. Bolt axles? Yeah. This is probably the first time that Carrie's been out on a highway recovery with the D9 with me. What the hell happened there? This is a little bit different for him. Even at night, a job on the Trans-Canada puts Team Green way too fast in a precarious spot. You've got a high-speed highway on each side of you operating. Just came through there, didn't even slow down. They're busy paying attention to what's going on in the ditch instead of what's going on in front of them. It's a very dangerous place. First red accident, driver. On the Trans-Canada. Brown Walkham Road there. Heavy traffic. Who is it, Al As Team Green. Soft road in the median. On high alert. Want to get our crew out of that situation as soon as possible. OK, watch out. Al's D9 dozer needs to drag a dump truck full of asphalt across nearly a kilometer. Here we go. Of muddy ground. The dump truck and trailer are loaded. This thing weighs about uh, 130,000 pounds. Where it was would be too difficult to come in here with the tow truck. The possibility of getting stuck is high. They're pulling a truck 
out of the median right now. We can recover the truck, the trailer in one piece. Drag it out to where the tow truck can readily hook onto it. Al's D9 goes the distance. Now we can load her up, we're done. Let's back up and uh, grab this baby. In mere minutes. We're on the home stretch. The fish isn't in the boat yet, but it's on its way to being landed. The big D9 strikes again. We come, we saw, we leave. On to the next one. Big Al, the green machine. A quick load up. That was easy fishing. Job's done, everyone's safe. Now we're gonna head home. I think we're ready to roll. And Al puts the busy highway. The D9 is the king of the house, definitely. Behind him. Oh yeah, you should see what that baby does with rail cars. They're pretty quick. One week later. Such a gorgeous day today. Constable Jody Thomas and Sergeant Paul Walker. This was all covered underwater here. And this all looks normal right now of the Abbotsford Police Department, patrol the Trans-Canada. Natural disaster. Never expected Abbotsford to have one of those. Last fall. Abbotsford's all flooded out. So surreal, eh? Oh, geez. 150 square kilometers. Where am I supposed to go? Because there's nothing here. We're drowning. Forcing the evacuation of 1,100 residents. With the community in crisis, They were trying to keep all the animals alive out here and they ended up falling off the road. You're on solid. The armed forces were brought in. This is basically preventing more flooding in the farms in the highway area. Incredible difference a year makes. The impact of that flood on people, a lot of that I still process, and it's surreal to me. The sense of being normal again is just really awesome. So different today. To the east, in the town of Hope. We're definitely in a lot better shape than we were a year ago, that's for sure. Jamie takes a rare moment of downtime to reflect. Imagine that water was as high as this and flooding over the road at that time. Way overflow in their bank. After Hope was hit by more rain. Oh, yeah. This is just scary than anywhere else in British Columbia. Realistically, how does a guy get back out of BC? A lot of people are trapped here. They can't get home. The town. I've seen some other people that are coming here, too. I've invited them over. Was cut off from the world. Boy, that river's high. we got to the other end. Just shows how resilient the community can be. 
We're not all the way there yet. But we've realized some kind of normalcy. I think everybody should be proud of it. Next time on Highway Through Hell. It's bulging pretty bad. A touch and go battle. There's nothing wrong with that truck. For Team Reliable. <sighs> Here we go. Al hustles. All right. Give him the back down and grab me. On the hill. Fight Mother Nature right now. You don't want to go up there. And off-road mayhem. This is not what I got on the phone call. Tests Jamie's young blood. Uh-oh. and go battle. There's something wrong with that truck. For Team Reliable. <sighs> Here we go. Al hustles. All right. I'll give him the back down and grab me. On the hill. Fight Mother Nature right now. You don't want to go up there. And off-road mayhem. This is not what I got on the phone call. Tests Jamie's young blood. Uh-oh. I just woke up. It's good. If you like winter. 8 a.m. Really watch yourself. In British Columbia's Cascade Mountains. Wow, what the hell happened there? In the ditch. There's a wrecker heading up right now. Dispatched from the town of Merritt. We're out in black sheep. Is Rooster Merkley with reliable towing. This recovery, I don't know too much about it yet. We'll see how it goes. Anybody give me an update on the accident on 97C? Arriving with Rooster. There's a truck lift on its side. Is a 50 ton heavy and supervisor, Dylan Greenwood. It's probably pretty heavy. Yeah. It's pretty decent shape. I think it came in pretty slow. Like, he came in here pretty pretty easy, eh? Yeah, right here. I think the driver fared pretty good. Hours ago, the semi hauling groceries. Crashed into the bank. Looks like he had a bad day. So I'm gonna back in like right here. Joining the Merritt crew today. How much does this thing weigh? Is operator James Luke. We should be 63,000. Trailer's gonna be 48 of those. Um, that extra set of eyes that can come out and say, hey, let's try this, let's do that and you never know, it might work. With 40,000 pounds of cargo. We're just seeing if it's hollow. At stake. I think the load inside is what carried it over because the dip here is deeper on this side than it is on the front. Dylan needs to decide if they'll right the transport with the load inside. If you bring it all up as one, if something goes wrong, you don't look like a superhero anymore. We don't usually try them loaded, but I think it might work out for us. Hopefully we don't have to go back home with our tail between our legs. That's a big job. Trailer went the dish 
last night. Near Merritt. I'm gonna set up on the rear, put you on the front. Yeah. A wreck loaded with groceries. It's all set up with a nice low line and a nice high line. Yeah. And we'll bring it up and over. As the reliable team. It's sort of a gamble. Planning a bold move. The trailer's in really good shape. So we're gonna try to keep it all together as one piece. So that's gonna go in the back here. Hopefully it comes back onto its wheels. Pass me the end of the soft strap. Just make sure it grabs. So right here, you're gonna hook into that fifth wheel. There you go. On traffic control is Jamie Davis's stepson, Brandon. The guys here at Reliable have not the greatest amount of room. I'm ready to go whenever. Anybody heading east on 97 C? We're gonna be coming to a stop. With low lines to the frame and high lines to straps, the two heavies will try to right the rig intact. Well, we're pulling. We gotta make sure it doesn't cause any more damage to the trailer. Tell me when to stop. Okay. Okay. Keep going, rooster. When you got two trucks on it, you need to work in sync. Let Rooster catch up! If one truck starts pulling a little bit faster than the other one, you're fighting each other. It's bulging pretty bad on the bottom here. Hold there. That load's right in the middle. I'm kind of nervous about it. If it breaks apart, it's gonna make a hell of a mess. This wall's not happy. kilometers away on the coca -Hala. It started getting snow yesterday. We've got about 18 centimeters since then. Highways maintenance supervisor, Curtis Brown. The only way to stay safe working on the coke is know your surroundings. Spots an unusual sight in the Great Bear Snowshed. When transport trucks start struggling to make it up, the intensity of the snowfall is generally quite high. How's it going? What's wrong with it? But the problem here isn't snow. This driver... Hopefully that's it. Okay. ...stopped to fix electrical trouble. Dealing with these issues as they're coming up and carry on his way. Yeah, that rest the truck's rolling. Five minutes north. Up against the snowbank there, eh? It's been snowing to beat the band. But we got a lot of snow on the ground. Al Quiring. Okay, here we go. Is wrangling another problem. Tighten her up. A stuck loader. Good, good, good. Beauty. It's critical we get him back into service as soon as possible. She's out of there. He's got the green machine. Some pretty big plates falling in. Patrolling the hill. Northbound, we got one spun out. 
Curtis spots the same rig that was in the snow shed. The driver's transporting some resin. It's got to be at least 60,000 pounds. It's a lot of weight, and that weight is not on his drive tires. Do you want to tug up the hill? Yeah, I'll give him the back down and grab you, OK? OK. Unless you have perfect traction, and you're done. Hey, Al. I've got uh, one that spun out that needs a tug up. Yeah, in a few minutes, sir. That'll work out perfect. It's really helpful having Al. I can call him anytime. Tow truck's backing down the hill. We're fighting Mother Nature right now, so we'll see what happens. Time is of the essence. You've got to be fairly quick and be confident on what you're going to do. It's like fishing up the stream. We come and pull a big fish up past the waterfall, and then that way they go. Doesn't matter to me what he's hauling. Just care about getting him off the road. With the resin truck rolling. You guys can make a pass right away and get that spot cleared outside the shed where the truck was spun out. That'd be great. Can't work. Curtis's team has a smooth road ahead. Crews are cycling the areas that are getting hit the hardest. Anything to keep the highway going. That's what we're here for. Following the standing in progress. Yeah, we got an accident scene up here. One hour east. I to say that load's right in the middle. Team Reliable's recovery. The wall is bulging pretty bad. Just got to make sure that uh, it's not going to split open. Is barely holding together. I don't like it. Cool. 40,000 pounds of groceries. Yeah, it's going to be really hit and miss, I'd say. Inside the rig could be lost. What if you tried to pull the back end up a bit? That's what I was just thinking about doing. There's a lot at stake here. Yeah, run the chain around the far side, and I'll throw a high line on it and see if I can bring the trailer up over this way. OK. We have to make sure that we don't damage the wall. So out here? Yep, OK. Up there, you're gonna go to that D ring up there. Okay, go to that D ring. Okay. Good. Okay, pull. With one line added from Dylan's record. It's coming. On Black Sheep's controls. Keep constant tension on it. I'm trying. Rooster, a heavy rescue novice. Keep going. Is under pressure. I think I've done maybe three or four heavy racks where they're in the ditch. Uh. Hey, guys. Definitely stressing me out a little bit. This could go bad very quickly. Near merit. Oh. A major recovery. Up in the air. Just tell him to help. 
just pull. I can. It's definitely a scary situation. Has Rooster on edge. All that weight from the groceries is on that wall. Something's gonna give. It could be catastrophic. There's load on that. A little more on the bottom. Inside the box. 40,000 pounds of groceries. Hey, Dylan! Front corner starting to give. Refuse to come easy. Until we get this job done, no one's really going anywhere. Here's the recovery. Right now, repositioning. You're starting to pull the tractor back a little bit now with you. To open the road. I got no tension on it. Is not an option. What if I hook somewhere up here? Let's take your chain off here. Let's throw you right here. If he lets go of the line, the whole trailer goes back in the ditch on its side. Traffic has been stopped for quite a long time, but there's really nothing we can do about it. I'm at the point where I have to set this thing back on its face. Oh. So, either we get progress or we set it down. Hey, Tyler. So it looks like it'll be a good still for you. How is the cold doing? Looks pretty clear right now. 100 kilometers away. Afternoon traffic is flowing. Winter driving on the Coquihalla could be sun shining to a blizzard. It is a very dangerous position to be in if you're not prepared. Well, that's nice. You get to see some uh, tarmac here. It's good. Traffic free flowing. Survival of the fittest on these roads here. Near the summit. What's going on here? Authorities are out. Hey, how you doing? Helping motorists. Just a safety check today. Another gift from BC Highway Patrol. Thank you. We're just checking for winter preparedness today. Leading the operation is Inspector Dale Somerville. The biggest thing we're looking for here is make sure folks have the proper winter tires on. Make sure that they have emergency kits. Make sure they have proper wiper fluid. Oh! BC Highway Patrol. There you go. <laughs> Enjoy. In snowy conditions, salt and sand can wreak havoc on visibility. Try safe, okay? Thank you. Have a good winter. Anytime we could take people and educate them to make sure they're safe. Tires look good. I think it's a great idea. Winter driving conditions. Can I face please? please? They're still working on getting that out of the ditch. To the east. How much tension do you want? A little bit more. Team Reliable is two hours in. It's up there. We're almost there, Brandon. Racing to save a rig packed with groceries. We definitely need to get this highway open again. None of us really know how the load is sitting. We gotta make sure we get the rigging perfect. I just need Rooster to hold it so I can maneuver. Once I maneuver, I'll get to the back. But as Dylan takes action to open the road. Okay, Rooster. I got nothing. Yeah. There's an unwelcome surprise. My hydraulics are acting up on black sheep. It hasn't leaked anything, has it? Dylan. 
this is going to be bad. Winches are down to a thousand psi both. It just idled down. A lot of traffic down here. Can you go jump up there and just look at the winch? It's not doing nothing. The winches right now, they're not pulling with the power that it should be. It's the winch. They're both not working. It's definitely a huge problem on this drone. I'm all excited to do this recovery. It won't winch. It's a little disheartening. Oh no. Feels like I'm never gonna get it done. Nothing. There's something wrong with that truck. In the mountains. I got nothing. A sudden breakdown. We just lost all polling power. Definitely stressing me out a little bit. As team reliable. Holy Lord, buddy. On hold. Huge line. We have to get this done. We have to get this out of here. What if we lock them in, pull the truck forward till it puts tension on? But James. Put some tension on it, and then I'll boom up. Okay. Has a workaround. Okay, hook that chain up, move. A little more. The black sheep. Go there. Oh, I know that truck the best out of anybody. Go there. She's old, but she could do it. With the driven out lines anchoring the wreck. All right. Dylan hustles. Okay, pop that hook off, James. Same with that chain. Okay, jump on the other side. Yep, take that hook off. To move the 50 ton into one lane. He's going to reposition and get the tension then I can get off the highway. I'm holding on to everything by myself. It's a lot of stress on the truck. Because of how much weight's in this trailer. Pretty nerve wracking. They've asked us to keep this highway open as much as possible. You want me to back off now? Yep. Just boom down. Now get me a lane on this highway open. Yeah, he's in traffic. You gotta love this, Dave. Dylan, he's doing his best to get these guys moving again. But Rooster <sighs> is forced to call it a day. Frustrating. Black sheep, we're bringing it back to our shop and we're gonna fix it. I don't like leaving a job halfway through it, but I have faith in the rest of the team. They'll get it out of there. A smaller wrecker. We do have another truck here. It's a single axle. Tags in to hold the semi. Never easy. Just standing by. We're just waiting for a backup truck to come. Coming from the west. Today I'm in my tandem. Ty Kennedy is on his way. The Barry crew has called me out. I'm gonna head up and help out Dylan and James. Anybody know how to 
the one is? He just got lots of snow. An hour and a half southwest. Oh yeah, completely different atmosphere here. I'm headed to Dogwood Valley. We got a call for a 4x4 pickup. 20-year-old AJ Case. This deck truck I'm driving is my day-in, day-out workhorse. Is in the Fraser Canyon. I was told it's a simple access road with a little bit of snow. This is not what I got on the phone call. The situation... Yeah, this is bad. ...is not what AJ expected. There's two feet of snow that I'm plowing through. This isn't going to be good at all. No, I'm not happy with this. Wheels are rubbing right up against the side of the snowbank. Well, I need to keep momentum, otherwise I'm going to be stuck. That's going to be terrible. You don't want to go up there. Off the canyon highway. This is not what I got on the phone call. AJ faces more white. Okay, this road's a lot skinnier than I thought. Than he bargained for. It's a little intimidating to be out in the back roads at nighttime. You've got to be on your toes. We're coming up to him right here. Finally. AJ reaches his target. Whoa. It's stuck, stuck. It's right up to the bumper on the front. The driver's side is beached. I'm gonna try to back up. My main goal right now is just get out of here without getting stuck. Okay, thanks. No worries. This truck is at the bottom of the hill. These chains are nice and tight, which is what we want. There's no clearing for me to turn around. It just gives it something to bite onto through the ice. To get positioned <sighs> for the recovery. Now is the goal to get to the intersection. AJ needs to reverse up, then back down a half a kilometer of snowy terrain. Hopefully I can stick some new tracks and stick the corner and make it up. I'm gonna give it a shot. Whoa, okay. But it's an uphill battle. This ain't good. Stuck. This is very frustrating for me. I'm kind of making a scene, and it's not too impressive. Now I'm phoning for help. Everyone's either busy or they're not answering their phone. That's perfect. High in the mountains. Several records in there. Heavyweight backup. Let's do this. Arrives from the west. Hi, Kennedy. Reliable. It's far away from the valley, but uh, I'm more than happy to go up and help. What do we want to do here, bud? Well, I got to this point. Yeah. That wall is not happy. Yeah, yeah. I just want to go look at that wall. Dylan and his team. Well done, you got a recovery coming up. 
have been fighting to save a bulging trailer. As soon as we lifted it, we'd seen it. She already had the bow in it. The rig carrying 40,000 pounds of groceries crashed last night. When trailers roll into the ditch, all the cargo falls to the one wall. Yeah, we've seen it right away as soon as I lifted it. We're gonna try and recover it without it splitting open. You want me to move in front of Ty? Oh yeah. Ty is good to have. Well, we're gonna move him into position, hold the load. He can help us get this thing done. Yeah, so Ty, you back right into here. We'll get rigged up. You snag ahead yeah. and give her another hold for me? Yeah. The 35 ton. Over. Joined by the 50 ton already on scene. We're gonna put two lines on that bottom part of the trailer. Is ready to go. We're gonna suck the trailer some over some more. I got the high line up top. We're at a 45. We're trying to lift and pull on the trailer at the same time. Are we shot in the lane down then? Okay, we're shot. Good done? Yeah. See what's going on up there or no? It closed up. We can come back a little more. You go, big guy. The power that they can pull, hopefully it'll pull towards where we need it. There you go. Just hold on to it. We're digging in here. Hey. The joys of being a truck driver. We're digging in here. Hey. Near merit. Just hold on to it. Dylan and his team are in the final stage. I know that's gonna break. Of a grueling tug of war. There's another chain right there. You always try to keep the thing as one piece. A lot of pressure focused on that, buddy. If you rip it apart, your night's gonna get a whole lot longer. Like if we can get through the rim? I can get your rim sling. Yeah, and let's try and pick it up. They need to make sure all rig points are ironclad. Having the rim sling through the tire. That's good. Allows us to pick and lift the front of the tractor as we pull. OK, buddy. That's OK. Yep. As they're doing the pull, I gotta watch and make sure that the wall is not gonna fall apart on us. We can take this one off. Okay. We can do one more pull and we'll throw to the fifth wheel plate. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah, we'll pull ahead, we'll let Travis go. So they've opened up one lane, I guess. Yeah, you know. Pull! Come on, Ty, pull! We only have a little bit left to do. We are finally able to get it to where it's sitting now. Just keep that line to the front and you'll just pull it ahead. Yeah. The customer, they don't want their truck to be ripped apart. You gotta roll, buddy. Yeah, they're rolling. They don't want the tow company to make their life worse. Sweet.
it's in one piece. Job went well. We out? Yep. It's great to be back with a reliable team in Merritt. Keep coming. Good. Yeah, you got her. Beauty. No, thanks for coming. Yeah, man. I Absolutely. appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Working with Dylan is always a treat. Good seeing hey, you. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Have a good one, bud. You too. This is a huge win to see everyone succeed. It's great for our company and for our customers. Good evening, Reliable. Two hours away, AJ. I'm furious, but if I need to keep calm. Is stuck alone on a brutal back road. Clear the loose stuff, like this is loose. AJ, he's a hard worker. He needs to adapt to things as they change. Down there is hard pack. And he needs to be quick on his feet. So uh, I'm gonna hand bomb it for now. I can't go over it. I can't go through it. I'll just get rid of it. AJ needs to reposition through heavy snow to recover a utility truck. Let's give this a whirl. side of the bank on both sides. I finally made it to a point where I could turn around and come back. The snow is quite thick here. I am so nervous to get stuck again. AJ stops. I want to stay as far this way as I can. At the top of the hill. I don't want to put myself in the position where I'm going to have to shovel for another two hours. Using extra rigging to extend the pole line, AJ needs to winch the unit 200 feet. You play with the cards you're dealt. I'm going to use whatever I have to go from my winch line to the back of his truck. I'm using my J-hook bridle to hook onto his hitch. And I'm going to be using my wheel strap because it's got a loop on one end and a chain on the other. It's got a safe working load of 3,330 pounds and a tear rate of 5,000 something pounds, which the vehicle weighs about 5,000 pounds, probably has 1,000 pounds of tools in it. AJ, he actually kind of reminds me of me when I was younger. You can come flying back that way, or flying up that way. He's in there, you know, all in, getting her done. So just keep it in four high, yeah. and then uh, reverse and just let it go at its own pace. I'm hoping this is my golden ticket to get out of here. Uh-oh. The truck's starting to move mine, which isn't good. Oh. In the Fraser Canyon. Oh, uh oh. AJ's late night recovery. Is a battle. For every inch. 
I don't want to be here any longer than I need to be. It's time to get this guy out. Oh, there we go. We're getting movement out of his pickup. The flat deck. We're getting movement. Dig in. This is what I want to see. Nothing's damaged. And I want to keep it that way. Well, oh yeah, I can take my additions out now. Let's get out of here and get him back on the road. And your next step is just going down the road. One more run. There's a couple of potholes here. And the punishing stretch. Oh, this, yeah. This was the narrowest part. Is in the rear view mirror. Feels amazing, other than the fact that we're still out in the back 40. Perfect. All set here. You're good to go. I'm just happy that the customer's on the road, and I am as well. I'm three hours late for my bedtime. Get home safe, guys. In the town of Hope. There's no palm trees in here. and We're not in the land of the sunshine. Did you get everything? Yes, sir. We'll get that steel in. Oh, yeah. Jamie and AJ. Oh, yeah. That'll make some good teeth, though, like right like that. Are working in the yard. AJ's a guy I'm keeping my eye on. So we're going to make some cleats. I enjoy having him around. He's a hard worker. I'll hold this for you for the first one just to give you a guide it up. Jamie needs something done. There it is. I'm right on that. I'm a very hands-on learner. Jamie is one of the best teachers that I've had. He's mechanically inclined. He's got, you know, aspirations. I really think he's got huge potential. Gonna be there for a lifetime, eh? Yeah. <laughs> So far, so good. Next time on Highway Through Hell. Looks like you went for quite a ride. Bend Metal Carnage. They won't look over. Tests team reliable. I can't see. Whoa. MSA. We're right on the edge. Watch the corner there. Hits the tipping point. No, no. Wow, that's a huge washout. And a backcountry mission. Should have bought my gumboots. For Jamie. Okay, give her. And AJ. Oh, the logs, Jan.